Hello, I'm going to go over some questions about the electromagnetic spectrum. These questions are taken from the foundation paper, which is a paper one from the edXL, but EM spectrum is also on all exam boards. 49 marks worth of questions here. Should take no more than 49 minutes for you to complete them in an exam situation. Question one. A student investigates what happens when light travels from air to glass. Figure 15 shows some of the apparatus used in the investigation. In figure 15, angle Y is the angle of, that's the angle of refraction. X is the angle of incidence, just in case they ask you that next time. Part 2. Figure 16 is a graph of the students' results. So they've got angle Y up the side in degrees and angle X in degrees along the bottom. Use the graph to calculate a value for angle Y divided by angle X. So you'd literally just take the angle Y. So that's 14 and divide it by the corresponding angle X, which is 20. So 14 divided by 10 would be 1.4, and then divide that by 2, so that's 0 0.7. Part 3. The student concludes that angle Y is directly proportional to angle X. Explain what the student must do to test this conclusion in more detail. So if we have a little look at that, you can see they've only took two results. So they basically need to take more results so we could see if it was actually a straight line going through the origin. And if you double one thing, it'll double the other. Take more readings. Using larger values of, what was that first angle? Larger values of X. using larger values of X and repeat. Three marks. Question two. All objects emit electromagnetic radiation. The intensity and wavelength of the emitted radiation vary with the temperature of the object. Figure eight shows the variation for an object at two different temperatures. The visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum is also shown. So red light is 700 nanometers and violet is about 390. So that's Richard of York gave battle in vain. Describe how intensity of the emitted radiation changes with temperature. Right, well with high temperature, you can see the intensities up the side. So high temperature, you have a large intensity in the visible light spectrum. Whereas the low temperature, the intensity is a lot smaller and it's outside the peak is outside of the visible light spectrum. Okay, so as temperature increases, so that's the high temperature curve, the intensity increases, and the peak is close to violet light, so that's a shorter wavelength. So the peak at high temperature 
has a shorter wavelength. Two marks. Question three. A student investigates how the angle of refraction varies with the angle of incidence when light enters a glass block. Describe how the student should perform this investigation. So four marks. Right, they're gonna need to measure the angle of incidence which is in between the incident ray and the normal. And then they're going to need to me measure the angle of refraction, which is in between the refracted ray and the normal. And then repeat that for different angles. Okay, so that'll actually get you up to five marks there. Question four. Some television remote controls use infrared radiation and other remote controls use radio waves. Explain why an infrared remote control may not switch on the television from behind an armchair but a radio wave remote control always will. Right, well imagine that that's your TV and imagine that that's your armchair and you're basically, for some reason you're behind the chair and you're trying to turn the telly over. Now, if the infrared remote control does not switch on the TV that must mean that the infrared is getting absorbed by the chair. Whereas the radio wave must be able to pass through the chair. So to be honest, that's not really much to do with science. You could have just worked that out using common sense. Question five. All objects emit electromagnetic radiation. The intensity and wavelength of the emitted radiation vary with the temperature of the object. Figure A shows this variation for an object at two different temperatures. The visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum is also shown. Right. How many times have I told you if you've been working your way through my videos, they just use the same questions um, every year. They, they change them slightly. It's like this year here, look, we've seen this graph just before. Uh, they've just turned it into a one mark question instead of whatever it was before, two marks. And they've turned it into a multi-choice. So the more of these questions you practice, you will start to see the same questions coming up all the time. And that builds your confidence. In which part of the electromagnetic spectrum is the peak of the low temperature curve? Right, low temperature curve here. Now, as I said before, red's got the longest wavelength, violet's got the short. If we were to do the electromagnetic spectrum, that's your visible light there. So just outside of the visible light, that's infrared. So that's your answer there, B. Question six. What do all waves in the electromagnetic spectrum have in common? They all travel the same speed in a vacuum. That's just something you need to memorize. Question seven. Which color of the visible light has the longest wavelength? I've said that a couple of times now, that's red. 
It's about 700 nanometers. Question eight. A figure nine shows an image taken at night using a camera that is sensitive to infrared radiation. Radiation with shorter wavelengths show as brighter areas in this image. Right, so all of these people's faces are shown up white. So they must have short wavelength. All of these parts here that's turning up black must have a long wavelength. Explain why the people can be seen against the background in this image. Now the thing is, is that the faces are all hot as well. So the people's faces are at a higher temperature than the background. That's why they're white and the background's dark. So the faces must be emitting shorter wavelength than the background. Question nine. Figure five is a graph showing the intensity wavelength curves for two hot objects, L and M. So this is the third time we've saw this type of graph. Estimate the wavelength where the intensity is at a maximum for each of the objects. So wavelength at a maximum intensity for object L. So there's object L. Where's it at its maximum? Yeah, around about there. So 85 micrometers. So 85 micrometers. And wavelength at a maximum intensity for object M. So about there is the maximum intensity. And what's that? About 94? About 94 micrometers. State with a reason, which object is the hotter object? It'll be object L because it's got a shorter wavelength. Question 10. A student investigates the way light passes through glass. The diagram shows the path of a ray of light through the glass. State the scientific name for the dotted line in the diagram. Well, that's the normal. You are supposed to know that. Part B. The student measures several values of angle I and angle R. She plots some of the results on the graph. The table shows results that she has not plotted. And it just says, can you plot these results on the graph? So angle I is nothing and angle R is nothing. Oh, that's easy, right? Angle R, nothing, angle I, nothing. And angle I is six degrees and angle R is nine. Angle I is six degrees. One, two, three, four, five, six. And angle R was nine. Just double check that. Yep, that's right. Angle R was nine and angle I was six. And then just draw a nice smooth curve as best you can. Oh, sorry, that's part two. Yeah, continue the line on the graph through the results you've just plotted. So I've just done that. Write down the values of angle I when angle R is 90. So angle R, 90, go along to the graph. And when it hits the graph, follow it down to the x-axis. 42. Now that's what I would do. The examiners love it when you put the, the dotty lines on. 
Question 11. Draw a line from each electromagnetic wave to its use. One has been done for you. Right. Microwaves. What do we use those for? Uh, communicating with satellites. Yep. Infrared thermal imaging already been done. Ultraviolet. That is detecting forged banknotes. And gamma rays is detecting or treating cancer. Question 12. A student investigates how light behaves as it leaves a clear plastic block. Figure 4 shows some of her equipment and the path of a ray of light through the block. She varies the angle of incidence inside the block and records the angle of refraction. So that's the angle of incidence inside the block and that is the angle of refraction. Plot the points on the graph below. Right, so when the angle of incidence is 5, the angle of refraction is 7. So angle of incidence 5, angle of refraction 7. So each block going up is going to be worth 2. So I need to go 3.5 blocks up. When the angle of incidence is 15, angle of refraction is 22. So angle of incidence is 15, need to go up to 22. 30 and 46, so go along to 30, go up to 46. 40 was 69, so go along to 40 and go up to 69. And when the angle of incidence is 42, angle of refraction was 76. So angle of incidence 42. And the angle of incident, uh, refraction was 76. So that's there. Just be careful. These go up by twos and these go up by ones. Right. Uh, draw the best smooth curve. So... Start at the bottom, come up like that. Part 3. Estimate the angle of incidence, which gives an angle of refraction of 90. So, if I just continue that a little bit more like that. So, angle of refraction of 90. So, angle of refraction 90. So, do your little dotty lines again. Go to the graph and then come down onto the x-axis with your dotty lines. What's that? 47? 47 degrees. Now, if your curve's slightly different than mine, it doesn't matter. As long as your results are about the same, which they will be, and then they always offer you a little range. So they'll probably say something like 45 up to 49 or something. Question 13. The diagrams show the radiations to which the human eye and a bee eye are sensitive. Describe differences in the sensitivity to radiation of a human eye and a bee eye. Right, so sensitivity goes up the side and frequencies going along the bottom. That's the human eye here and that's the bee eye there. Right, so you can see the human eye is only sensitive to visible light, so we can't see outside of visible light. Whereas if you look at the bee's eye, um, yeah, it can, well, it can actually see a little bit of infrared, but not much. But it can actually go beyond the visible spectrum and it can actually see ultraviolet as well. So B eyes are sensitive to ultraviolet as well as visible light. So B eyes are sensitive to ultraviolet as well as visible light. Here 
if it was worth three, you could say that the BI, um, its sensitivity is kind of spread out over three peaks, whereas the human eyes are bunched together. Part B. A scientist wrote this sentence. Ultraviolet radiation is harmful to humans, but useful to honeybees. Suggest what the scientist means by this sentence. You may wish to look at the graphs above. Right, well, the human eye, we can't see ultraviolet. All that ultraviolet does is it harms our skin and it could damage our skin cells and cause skin cancer. Whereas ultraviolet is useful to bees because they can actually see UV. Question 14. Question 15. When light strikes a glass surface, it can be both refracted and reflected. The diagram shows the possible paths for a rate of light which strikes a surface at the point O. Which of the lines show the possible path of a rate of light passing from A into glass? put across next to the box. Right, they've been a bit cheeky here. Really, this should be a big glass block like that. And this normal here should be dotty lines. That's how they normally do it. So they've just changed it a little bit to try to catch you out. Now, if it's going from air into glass, I use an acronym with my students. I think I've made this up. I've never seen it anywhere else. If the ray goes faster as it enters, it'll bend away from the normal. And if it goes slower, it'll bend toward the normal. Now, it's light, and if it's going from air, it'll travel fast, and then it's going into glass, so it'll travel slow. So it's gonna go slower. So if it's going slower, it'll move towards. So it's R, O, S. That'll be the path. R O S. Part 2. The diagram shows a water wave going from deep water into an area of much shallow water. What diagram? I wonder if I've made a mistake. The wave is refracted at the boundary between deep water and shallow water. Which row in the table is correct for what happens when the wave is refracted? Right. Well, there's definitely going to be a change of speed. And there's also going to be a change of direction. So the answer is C. Question 16. A student investigates how the angle of refraction varies with the angle of incidence when light enters a glass block. We've saw a question like this before. Very similar. It's the same picture, isn't it? The student's results are shown in figure 6. Explain whether any of the readings are anomalous, right? Yeah, that one. Why? Because it doesn't fit the pattern. So it's the result when the angle of incidence was 40 degrees. So how do we know to a two marks we need to put something it doesn't fit the pattern. That's what you see. Needs to be down there really, doesn't it? All right, and that's the last question. So, I hope that was useful for you. Hopefully a few of them will come up on this year's GCSE exam paper and you'll nail them. So, Work hard, be nice, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.